You know, on this channel, we talk a lot about desktop processors and gaming processors and processors for developers. There's a YouTube channel for people to do software development and integration and mess with stuff on the Linux kernel. Yeah, it's, have you seen the level one Linux channel? It's pretty nice. But this today, <laughs> this little tiny board that I have in front of me, this is a mini STX form factor. This is from Sapphire. This is based around the AMD V1000 embedded Ryzen CPU. This is not your grandfather's x86. I don't, I don't, I don't know what sort of poignant, pithy comment that I could come up with, but this is genuinely exciting because this is another market that AMD is going to disrupt. Or maybe, you know, spoiler alert, the AMD has already been disrupting the market and this is going to be even more so. One of the things that we talked about with the Zen microarchitecture was that you could sort of Lego together your own components. Now you could do that at the silicon level or you can partner with a company like Sapphire and they can build a custom, you know, an ODM solution around embedded Ryzen that suits your needs. So this is a mini STX form factor. It's kind of standardized. So this is available sort of as a normal configuration from Sapphire, but they can customize it depending on what your needs are. This configuration is not aimed at consumers and individual buyers. Like you might be thinking, oh man, this will make a really amazing home theater machine. It's ultra low power. I could go totally fanless because this thing will run up to 54 watts, but Sapphire is not really in a position to deal with end user customers for you know the ODM. Um, there are some options, there are some resellers. I mean, heck, level one might, I mean, we did the KVMs, we might carry some configuration of this in the level one store, if that's the thing. Of course, level one will have to provide support and RMA and all that not very much fun stuff for products. But this product is so exciting, it's so tempting that, you know, we need a US distributor or we need a distributor you know, somewhere. There is, there are some worldwide distributors for Sapphire, but anyway, what is it? What are, what are we looking at here? All right, it's AMD Ryzen Embedded V1000. This is basically, so we've done the benchmarking, we've done the testing. This is basically a Ryzen 5 2400G in a 54 watt package. It's about 5.5 by 5.8 inches. It has quad DisplayPort out, four DisplayPort output ports that are capable of 4K 60 each. You can also dr drive a, a 5K display with a a little different configuration or if you've got a 5k display that has the two display port inputs for like the multi-stream split screen whatever it'll totally drive one of those as well it has three usb 2.0 ports and one reversible type c usb 3.1 port that are all provided by the chipset at the rear there is a 19 volt dc input jack but i'm running it off of a uh, modded atx power supply it just uses the four pin 12 volt rail because 54 watts we also have a four pin fan header for the CPU fan and a three pin fan header for a case chassis fan. There's a case intrusion, case open jumper. There's also a uh, serial port header, which is RS-232, RS-485, and RS-422, which are serial protocols. I mean, RS-485 is alive and well in the industry, you know, let me tell you. We've also got inputs for the uh, general purpose IO. So general purpose IO, if you're looking to build something to control relays or something like that, you can do that with the general purpose IO headers. There's an interface for the system bus. Uh, there's also a normal front panel connector. So if you wanna break this out into like a more consumer friendly that's got power and reset and some status LEDs, there is a front panel header connector there as well. For storage, you've got two options. Basically, you can do SATA. It's got a normal SATA connector along with a power breakout. So you could get an extension cable to go from this four pin header on the motherboard to SATA power that's suitable for powering a 2.5 inch solid state drive. Probably not enough power there for a mechanical hard drive, but you know, it's up to Sapphire on the specs. They can build something custom for you there. We've also got two M.2 slots. One's an E key and the other one is keyed for up to you know, uh, an M.2 drive up to an 80 millimeter M.2 drive that will uh, run at PCI Express or SATA. So both of your SATA interfaces are sort of occupied there. Also on board, we've got two Realtek Gigabit NICs. So this thing will totally saturate as you'll see in our benchmarking, two Gigabit connections. So that's sort of mind blowing. We've also got on board Azalea Audio, which is, you know, a Realtek, a lower end four channel Realtek solution. But we've got microphone, uh, microphone input port and a headphone output port on the sort of front IO area of the board. Now our particular configuration is the V1807B. Uh, That's a Vega 11 graphics and four core eight thread 
uh, a CPU that's clocked up to 3.8 gigahertz for the single core turbo. And so we were running, you know, a full GNOME desktop. We were seeing up to 3.8 gigahertz as our single core turbo, but the UEFI is configurable. You can configure this all the way down to a 12 watt part. Now, Sapphire will be more than happy to sell you a version of this board that has one of the other embedded Ryzen processors on it. This is one of the higher end embedded Ryzen processors before you get into embedded Epic processors because you can get those too. But nevertheless, this board still supports ECC. I mean, you might be thinking, oh, I need an Epic CPU for ECC support. Nope, you can totally run ECC SODIMs. So ECC SODIMs are sort of a new thing, but they're standardized. So if you get ECC SODIMs, you can totally use those. I definitely recommend dual channel, dual channel configuration, and the faster memory that you can get. I tested with both 2666 and 3200. Sapphire officially supports DDR4 3200, so you can run 3200 dual channel. And currently I'm running uh, G-Skill Ripjaws DDR4 3200 with this kit. Now the 3200 is not picked up completely automatically. You have to change that in the menu in the UEFI, but it's a relatively full featured UEFI for an embedded system. So, you know, you've got the Zen common options and the P-State control that you would see sort of on a desktop board. So this is a little bit desktop board and a little bit embedded board. This is a lot of horsepower for a relatively small embedded system. And you think 3.6 teraflops of compute power in a tiny little package that's about 54 watts. Now measured power consumption at the wall, including this relatively inefficient you know, uh, power supply was about 65 watts, even while running our benchmarks. We were doing all sorts of benchmarks thanks to the Ferronics test suite using kernel 4.17.12, I think. We tried a couple different kernel versions because we wanted to get the, the patches and all this kind of stuff. We also tested OpenSSL because maybe somebody would want a network appliance version of this. Now that Ryzen system on chip will support dual 10 gig links. So you can run insanely fast networking with that. As configured, this Sapphire board is really meant for more of a, a display solution. And so running four 4K displays off of that Vega GPU is no problem. But you know, with Vega, you can do compute performance. And so some of our benchmarks actually cover the compute end of things with Vega, because when they're talking about 3.6 teraflops, they're talking about x86 plus the Vega performance as well. And so for light AI applications, things like OpenCV, image recognition, that sort of thing, you can do that on this tiny little system in 54 watts, which is kind of mind blowing. The E-Key M.2 is set up for networking, and so USB and networking and all of that stuff is all available in the M.2. There's so much information about this board because we're you know, sort of an exclusive first look, I guess, or we're maybe the, one of the first people getting a review out on this. There's a full article on the Level 1 website that goes into all of the details, and that's where you can see all of the benchmarks and all of the other information that I was able to gather from running a whole bunch of stuff on this particular board. As configured for all of our diagnostics, we were using the 3200 memory and an ADATA XPG 256 gigabyte NVMe. You can see our, our performance numbers from running that, that ADATA NVMe. You know, we were able to saturate those PCI Express links. The performance is on par, a little worse than a Ryzen 5 2400G because, you know, let's face it, this is a lower power part, does not clock quite as high but the performance delta really is shockingly low. So if you're a software developer looking to develop with an embedded system like this, you could start with a Ryzen 5 2400G system and then migrate your software to the embedded system when you're ready to purchase in quantity. Now, because this is a commercial you know, uh, solution or an industrial solution, Sapphire is gonna wanna sell you not one, but like 100 at a time. So this is really more for commercial interests and things like that. Don't really contact Sapphire if you just want one or something like that. It's really meant for industrial customers. But they let me take a look at it because they know that I run in some of those circles and that I work in some of those you know, industries. And so being able to uh, get my feet wet with the V1000 CPU from AMD, I mean, this is, uh, when you think about the competition, you can get higher end, um, you know, sort of image processing AI, but it's gonna be crazy expensive. And you might be able to get a little bit more IPC in terms of the x86 side of things, but the competition doesn't really have a, an answer for the embedded Vega GPU and the price point. I mean, you can't not talk about the price point. So in terms of a lot of digital signage applications, medical imaging, uh, a powerful video thin client, or a thin client like that you might find in a hospital 
for imaging or in some kind of like, you know, development thing where you need multiple 4K displays, uh, this is this would be a, a difficult uh, <laughs> a difficult platform to beat. Now, as configured, I think the the recommended price on this is going to be around US 450. But if you get some of the lesser expensive CPUs uh, from the V1000 family, the price is going to come down to around you know 325 or less. And there's some links to some other you know alternative platforms. And maybe if you're like, oh, I must have this for DIY, there are some options. So be sure to check the article on the Level One website. If you have any ideas or stuff to run with this uh, or testing or any additional information you want to do, feel free to reach out on the Level 1 text forum. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.